Do you get stressed out when you're under time pressure? You ever felt your mind go blank when you're trying to answer a question or solve a puzzle while the clock is running? I will show you a neat trick that will help you solve the green cell and the rest of this competitive Sudoku much quicker. And this trick, it works on most hard puzzles. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. All right, we're going to one go here in block two. You have these two ones, columns four and five. You have a one right here. So we can solve for a one in this cell. And then because of these two ones, there's only two possibilities for one in block three. So I'm going to mark that using sign notation anytime in a three by three block. You have two possibilities for a candidate. You mark them. In case we solve one of these cells, we can solve the other right away. It gives us a great idea about restrictions in this puzzle. Using this one and this one right here, we know there's only two possibilities for a one in block four. And so with the Snyder ones here, these actually also act as a pointing pair. Since the ones are limited in block four to column one, a one can't be anywhere else outside of the column. So you can't have ones here because if you put a one right there, no place to put a one in block four. You want to have one right here. That's why it cannot be in that cell. And so it restricts the ones of these two cells in block seven. And then with this one right here, there's going to be something a little neat here I want to show you. Where can the ones be in block six? They can be in these four cells. All right. And then where can the ones be in block three? These two cells. So you notice the ones are restricted to columns seven and nine in blocks three and block six. So what that means is the one's got to be somewhere here in column eight, and it's only can be in, in column eight down here in block nine. You have this one right here. So these two cells have to be ones. This is called a claiming pair. This is kind of a weird mini X wing look, but what it means is the ones have to be one of these two cells. They're not going to be here, here, or here anymore. And greetings, friend. I welcome you to the solve of round three, puzzle four of the Sudoku Grand Prix. This is one of the hardest competitive puzzles I've ever come across. But I'm going to show you a little trick that's going to help you solve this puzzle much more quickly. Before we do that, you have to find some restrictions in this puzzle. Where can a two go in block three? All right, you have this two and this two, and you have a two right here. Only one place for the two. And now with these twos and this two, solve for two in block eight. And with these twos and this two, we can solve for two in block four, displacing that Snyder one, so we can immediately solve that for a one. And then with these twos and this two, we can solve for two in block one and finish up all of the twos. Now let's look where the threes can go. We got these two threes in columns five and six. And so we can solve for three up here in block two. Actually, we can do Snyder threes in block two. I wish I could solve them. Not yet. And then block nine, because of this three and this three, two possibilities for a three. So a three could possibly be here in the green cell. We shall see. Now we're going to four go here in block three. Well, with this four and these two fours, we can solve for four right here. And so with these two fours, now you have Snyder fours in block nine. Okay. And then with these two fours, you can solve for a four here in block five. And with these two fours, you can solve for four, or you can do Snyder fours here in block seven. And this is cool, a nice little bonus tip for you. You'll notice, similar to what we had with the ones, you have kind of a, what's called a mini X-wing of fours here. And so four is going to be either here and here, or here and here, in block seven and nine. Which means the fours, whenever you see this situation, you know a four's got to be in row seven in block eight. And so I made these two sets of Snyder marks. I look up here, I see, oh, I got two fours there. Only place a four can go now in block eight is up here in row seven. So that's that cell. So we can use that mini X wing to solve for a four. All right, let's look where a five can go up in block two. You got this five and this five. We can solve for a five right here, displacing that Snyder three. Now we solve that three. And with these two fives, Snyder fives in block one. And then with the block six, we can look these two fives, Snyder fives here. And yes, Snyder marks can actually be made if they're not in the same row or column. There's only there's two candidates. And then in block eight, 
these two fives, Niner fives right there. Now, let's go down column five. We can make some solves here. All right, you'll notice we have six candidates filled out. We got one, two, three, four, five, eight. So six cells are filled out. We need a six, seven, and a nine. Well, I have a six and a seven right here to look at this cell. This is a naked single nine, which now pushes the six and seven to these two cells. So that's a naked pair. When you have a naked pair in the column and in the block, that's a locked pair, which means six and seven cannot be anywhere else in the column or the block. So this now can only be a nine. So we can solve that for uh, nine. And now we can use uh, someone we just solved. So you got this six. Look at the sixes. They're going to be in these two spots in block five. And with this six cutting across, only two possibilities for six in block four, which makes them a pointing pair. That will come in handy a little bit later. And then let's look at the sevens. Because this seven's cutting across row seven. Only two possibilities for seven in block eight. So that makes them a pointing pair. And then with this seven, two possibilities for seven right here. You got to focus a lot right down there in block. Let me put back my green cell. I must have got rid of it when I got rid of the blue cell. Sorry about that. All right. But we're going to make a lot of restrictions down here in block seven. This is kind of the key to this puzzle. And now we can do sevens as a pointing pair in block six because of this seven and this seven. A lot of pointing pairs, a lot of claiming pairs in this puzzle. That's why it was the hardest one. It was the last of the classics, and it was definitely the hardest to solve. Niner sevens in block three. And I'm going to give you a bonus tip. It is when to look for a naked single. And the key here is you want to look at any kind of row or column when they have five or more cells to see if there's enough restriction for a naked single. We have a one, two, four, five, eight in row one. We need a three, six, seven, nine. Well, if you look, at this cell right here, you have a three in the block. You have a six in the column. And now these sevens are right here. They can't be in the cell. Or you can look at the pointing pair of sevens. This is a naked single nine. And what it does for you is now it allows us to put a three, six, seven naked triple. Since the three is already in the block, you take that away and it's going to leave us with Snyder 3 is up here in row 1 as a claiming pair. And viewers like David Wilhelm and David Vine, they find these bonus tips so helpful, they sometimes buy me a coffee or send me a super thanks. And I appreciate that. But another critical step with these 3s is now you see that the 3s are limited to columns 2 and 3 in block 1. And with this 3 here, and that these cells are all filled out, 3's got to be in one of these spots in block Four. And so you notice that three can't be in column one in block one or four. And so the three has to be somewhere here in column one in block seven. And you have a three right here. So we have another claiming pair. And so we're, we're removing possibilities for cells in this column in block seven. It's really important. So let's get rid of our colors there. And then let's look at where the eights can be. All right. We haven't looked at the eights yet. We got an eight right here. Can't be in these spots. You got a pointing pair of eights in block five. Limits the eights at these two spots in block six. And the nines, because you have a nine right here taking these two cells, you got a nine right here. The only place a nine can be in column one is those two cells. So that's another claiming pair. So now nines can't be in these cells either. All right, this is very important. Got to notice how much restriction we're creating in block seven is also going to help us with this green cell. But this right here, where we're at, is about as far as you can get with traditional methods. And so at this point, when you're looking for a harder puzzle, and this is where you might get stuck and the time crunch is going because you are time when you're doing the Sudoku Grand Prix, you have to either decide to look for single candidate strategies or buy value cells. And where there's great restriction, we're going to look at a little bit of the BVCs. And look across row three. You only need three more candidates. We need a six, seven, and eight. Well, I have a seven right there. So that's a six, eight. All right. And then this cell would be a six, seven, or an eight. And then we have restrictions here in block three. We have a two, three, four, five, and a nine. We need a one, six, seven, eight. We have a six, a seven in the column. So that's going to be a one, six, eight. And we have a six right here. And the seven is a pointing pair. So that's going to be a one, eight. And I'll tell you, you could use a two string kite here. 
and it's going to be a little hard to find using single cannon strategy. And <laughs> two string kite actually happened to be the theme of my last rewards puzzle pack. I want to congratulate John Brown, Aaron Wells, Paula Phoebe, and Carol Emmerich all for sending me the correct solution to that pack. My May puzzle pack comes out tomorrow and it features puzzles by Garlic Bread Fries, unique exclusive puzzles. I could be giving you a shout out next month, but you have to join a Smarty Party through the pinned comment to get this pack. Just like my new members, Frank Harper and Scott will be getting. The trick I'm going to show you now is easier to spot than a two string kite. And it's very quick because it's a quick scan will get you there and I'll show you the shortcut. Okay, what we're going to look at here, you might notice that you have a 6-7 in block 3 in this cell. Next block over, different row, you also have a 6-7 right here. All right, so you 6-7 here, 6-7 here. What you want to do is now focus on these three cells in the other block in the other row. Is there a restriction? Can a 6 or 7 uh, be or not be in these three cells? Well, you'll notice that a 6 can be here, can be here, and a 6 can be right there. That is a possibility for these three cells. A 7 cannot be in one of those three cells. When you see yourself in this situation, you've actually found yourself a W wing. Now, a traditional W wing, you could look at these blue cells and you can go, oh, well, the sevens form a conjugate pair using these two red cells, right? You have a conjugate pair and it connects the two similar bivalue cells. And so in this case, you know, either this is a six, if it's not a six, then that would be a seven. This would be a six, this can't be a six, and you have a six right here. And so a conjugate pair that connects two similar bivalent cells in, in different blocks, that is a W wing. Well, the one I just showed you is a little bit easier to spot than that. W wings are usually pretty hard to spot. This one, you look here, you go, okay, six, seven, six, seven, and now you just gotta look and see if one of those can't be there. And the seven can't be here. So what does that tell us? That tells us that these cells cannot both be a seven. Because if you put a seven, in those two cells, where would a seven go in block one? You have no place to put it, right? Because it can't be here, can't be there, and it can't be here. So we know one, at least one of those cells has to be a six. So very quickly, you can deduce that one of these has to be a six. You can eliminate a six from any cell that sees both. This is a delta varia W wing. And I call it easier because you don't have to look for a conjugate pair. It's a pretty easy scan across, and it also, conforms to the restrictions of the puzzle. You know, it reminds me a little bit of uniqueness, but unique rectangles require the puzzle as a unique solution. This one is just pure and simple logic. Seven can't be in both of these because you have no place to put a seven in block one. And so what we can do there is now remove the six from this cell. And what does that give us? It gives us a one eight naked pair. And since we have a one eight naked pair in the block, we can remove an eight from right there, and this gives us a six, seven naked pair. And a naked pair also acts as a pointing pair. And if you wanna learn more about W-Wings, check out this tutorial. Let's remove these marks, and now it's time to solve that green cell. Because this six, seven acts as a pointing pair and naked pair, a six cannot be anywhere else in the column. So you can't have a six here, you already have a six right there, and you have a six right there. Where can the six go in block nine? It can only be in this cell. So we can solve that cell for a six. And then that's gonna displace the Snyder four, and also displace that Snyder three. Okay, now we can use this to do some more solving. I'm gonna call this following the Snyder. We're not done yet, there's still plenty of solving to go. Because of that four, just place that Snyder 4, solve this cell for a 4. And then we can look and say with this 3, we can displace the Snyder 3 here and solve this 3 in the corner. Bum, bum, bum. Displacing that Snyder 9. And then we can follow this 9 and look across with this 9. We can solve for 9 in block 9. And now we can start looking for where a five can be. We made a restriction down here. Where can a five go? Here, let's look. We got a one, two, three, four, six, nine. We have five, seven, and an eight. Well, I got an eight here. The sevens are right there. They can't be in there. This has to be a naked single 
5, which displaces a 9 or 5 there and allows us to solve for a 5 in block 8. And then that gives us a 7, 8, and they could pair right there. All right, we're looking good. And now we're going to kind of follow the Snyder and see where else this can take us. Let's look up here in this cell. What could it be? Well, it can't be a 1, it can't be a 2, it can't be a 4, a 5 now, a 6, a 7, 8, or a 9. This is a naked single 3. It's very helpful to find that naked single 3. Because now we can remove the 3 from here, displace that Snyder, and solve this cell for a 3. And then we also, with these two 3s, and this 3, solve for a 3 here in block 6. And now I'm going to do what's called uh, sweeping the blocks. We're going to go up here, and we're going to do a little sweeping, okay? You got a 5 there, got this 5, pointing pair of 5s in block 4. It means that can't be 5, it's going to be a 5. We can finish the rest of this using my neat naked triple trick. You have a 1, 8 right here. So an 8 can't be in this cell, and because of this 8, it can't be in this cell. So whenever you have an 8, uh, one of the digits, it looks at two of the cells, and another one repeats, and in this case, the uh, eights can't be here or here, and then the sixes are a pointing pair. They can't be there as well. We can solve all three cells because we know this now has to be your seven. The only place the eight can go is right there, and this is going to be your six. Okay, let's move on over here, block three, and we can kind of sweep out the seven and the six from right there. And then we can go to block two because we get the seven there. We're going to sweep out block two, which is seven and a six. Okay, now let's move on to block seven. Can we finish block seven? Yeah, the first easy way to start is right here with this full house. Okay, we know there's only one digit remaining. That's got to be a six. So now we're looking for a one, seven, and an eight. Well, I got an eight right there. So here's your eight. Displacing the Snyder seven, displacing the Snyder one. Knocked all that out. Let's sweep out block nine. Because of that one, we can solve this cell for a one now. We just need a five and an eight. Got my five right here. So here's your five and there's your eight. Okay, and now we can sweep out block six. It looks like we can, there's a lot of digits, but we can actually knock this out pretty easily because of this five right there. We know this cell now has to be the five. We displace that Snyder five. That five displaced that Snyder eight, and which is gonna allow us to do a one, seven, nine in here. And since we have a nine right there, this is gonna be your nine. We got a one right here. That's gonna be your one, that's gonna be your seven. We'll sweep out block three with this one. We got the eight and the one right there. All right, and then we'll move over here with a neat naked triple trick for block four. We need a five, six, nine. I got the five and six right here, two of the three digits, and I got the five repeated. We can solve all three. This has to be the nine. The only place the five goes right there, and this is going to be your six, which can displace this Snyder six. We can solve for six right there. Then we know we only have one digit remaining. It's going to be a seven in row six, and then we can now sweep out block eight with the eight and the seven, and come back up and finish the rest of block five, knowing that that's gonna be eight, and the last digit is a nine. See if you can spot the W-wing shortcut in this next video. Thank you so much for watching.